Welcome back to another CG Figures tutorial. In today's video, I'm going to show you how you can clean up particle systems and better use them with Booleans. So to showcase that, I have these three Ico particles that I prepared in previous tutorial. And on the surface, they all look quite similar. But when we go to the particle settings, all you'll notice is for the generic default model, what I have is an Icosphere that if I tab into edit mode, you can see I subdivided it. It has 362 vertices. So I set up a hair particle system emitting from the verts with 362 particles. I used a collection from blue and white spheres so that I could get a good mix. And you can see all of those here. Now, a common thing that you might wanna do is cross section this. So just make a nice little cutaway and do that using a Boolean. You can see I have this very large cube here with a wireframe in the viewport. And I have, if I come to the modifiers, a Boolean modifier placed above the particle system. So with modifier stack enabled in the particles, when the Boolean cuts through the Ico particle, it should also cut through and reduce where the particle system appears. However, there's a very major problem with that. And I'll hide these two solutions for now so that if we go ahead, hit G, X with our cutter and move it in, what you'll notice is you could see all of this overlap. So all the white and all the blue, they're all overlapping very, very heavily. And clearly this is also solid. So the solid thing is a very easy fix. Just come to your particle settings, uncheck show emitter in the render, and come down to viewport display and uncheck show emitter there. Now we can see inside the way that we want it, so we can cross section this using our cutter. That's great. But you'll notice two things. One is that the collection is changing, so the blue and white distribution is going crazy as I move this in and out. And again, there's this barrier problem. So how are we going to fix that? Well, the first solution is actually very simple, and it's just going to fix the barrier problem. So you can see I've got my Solution one, partial fix. If I hit G, X, and now bring this over, you'll notice again that the colors are changing, but this time there's no overlap. I am very simply cutting out the vertices that I want, getting that cross section. So this one also has show emitter unchecked in both the render and the viewport. But the difference is, if I actually scroll all the way down, I have set up a vertex group density for this icosphere. This one does not have a density, and this one does. And density tells the particle system which vertices it can use to place the particles. So if I tab into edit mode, hit one for vertex select and hit alt A, then come down to the object data properties, you can see I have a vertex group. If I tell it to select all the vertices in that group, you can see it's just all the vertices in the object. So grab the entire object, choose select all vertices. And once you've done that, use that as the density and it will only ever put particles there. So when they get cut away by the Boolean, it won't try and double up on all the strange extra vertices that the Boolean is creating, which is actually what's happening there. However, there is that same problem of what's going on. Why is it actually changing all the distribution? And that's because it is picking random every time it does this. So we can uncheck pick random and then we can just move in and out. You can see it's still doing it. It's because it's replacing items from the collection. And so you're not going to be able to uncheck pick random and get this to work. The way that you have to do this because you can do it is with solution number two, i.e. better fix. So this time, again, we'll hit G, we'll go X. And now as you can move, what we're seeing is not only are we not getting that edge duplication that we have here, but we're also not getting the color change. So if we just move through, you can see all of the verts are staying the same and coming in and out. And though this solution works, it is a little bit of a nuisance. All you're doing in this case is actually having two particle systems. So one particle system is exclusively for the blue spheres and one particle system is exclusively for the white spheres. And I just selected those randomly by basically coming into object or edit mode rather, hitting select, select random, assigning one to group A, one to group B, and then using the densities for group A and group B to decide where the particles of each color would appear. So the white ones appear where the group B vertices are, and the blue ones appear where the group A vertices are. And so very simply, that is a nice easy fix for that problem. It, it works pretty well. The original problem that I had with this was trying to do Boolean cross sections of cell wall membranes, but you can also use it for things like these Ico particles. Now, unfortunately, there is a limit to this approach. If you were going to solve this problem more concretely, you'd probably have to do a little bit of programming and just basically find a way to tell the particle system, only ever put one particle here. If a particle is already here, don't try and put another one here. 
However, if that solution exists in Blender, I am currently unaware of it. So let's talk about the last part, which is the limitations. So in this case, you can see this is a particle system. It has cubes for the blue instead of spheres, and cubes are a bit of an issue. Now, when you actually set up the particle system initially, this random or this advanced options box is not actually checked, but it is actually showing you what is going on with the particles. And the default option is velocity hair. So even though you won't see rotation because advanced isn't checked, the default option chosen by the particle system is velocity hair. And basically that just means they're going to come off facing normal to the particle system. However, that is a problem because if you have an object that isn't perfectly symmetric all the way around, like a sphere, when we hit G and X on our cutter and move it in again, what you'll notice is in this case, it seems fine because our cubes are not overlapping, but if we were to introduce any kind of randomness in orientation, that would go out the window right away. So let's check advanced, let's choose rotation, and let's just turn on phase, and we'll randomize phase a little bit. And this is a very useful control for particle systems, so it's a little unfortunate because you can actually get a lot of simulation with it. But you'll notice that now, even though the spheres are actually doubling up, so many of these spheres are duplicated, you can't tell because they're spheres and they're the same all the way around. But the cubes you can now start to see have doubled up and it's applying that new random rotation. So if you want to use an object that is asymmetric, the way that you have to do it is make sure that you actually do have the advanced controls enabled and you want to make sure that the phase is zero, the randomized phase is also zero. And if you're having a particular amount of trouble, which can happen for certain systems, change the axes to one that you know is going to work. So don't use you know, say the object orientation, if it's going to be a problem, which it actually shouldn't be. We can see there that that's fine. Don't use a randomization that's going to be a problem. So set your rotation the way that you want it to be so it's consistent every time. There we go, that's fine. And make sure also that your randomization is not enabled for scale. If you want to use a different scale of the same object, do the same thing we did for colors. So if you want smaller cubes and bigger cubes, have them be arranged separately using vertex groups. If I try and use scale randomness here, you're gonna see what's ha what happens here as I drag this over. It's actually going to undulate and you're gonna to start to see the flickering of these. And though that is a very interesting effect that you can actually use, it will cause some problems. The last limitation is actually, we just saw it very quickly, is if you Boolean the object completely, it will always put one right in the middle, presumably where the um, origin is. So if you had this object and you wanted to solve that problem, you could see my 3D cursor is way over here. I could try this, right click, set origin, origin to 3D cursor. Now it's actually just putting that object way over there. So I'll move this blue one so you could see it. So it's way over here. That's fine. It's not a great solution, but it is out of sight. So I could technically cross-section this entirely if I wanted to. Just bear in mind, you now moved the object origin all the way over there. So if you try and rotate, it's going to rotate around that or rotate or scale towards that point or any of those sorts of things. But very simply, that is our collection of fixes. So use vertex groups to set the density. Try to reduce the amount of random variation you have in terms of color and isotropy of the particle, size of the particle. And if you do all that, you can combine booleans with particle systems to get very clean edges that can be used to cut open objects or show how things are forming through animation. It's a very cool effect. In any case, that's gone on far too long. If you found this useful, consider subscribing, sharing with your friends and colleagues, hopefully use it to go make some figures, and until next time, you have yourself a great old day.